Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today in this series called In Depth, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Hecarim Jungle. Hecarim is a fast and powerful carry jungler who's somewhat easy to pilot, but has extremely high carry potential when mastered. If you enjoy the content, it really helps me out if you could leave a like and comment on the video to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to talk with me and other members in the community looking to improve, be sure to join the Discord link that's in the description. I hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Abilities. To start off, let's break down Hecarim's kit and some tips to make sure you're using it to its full potential. Hecarim's passive is called Warpath. Passively, Hecarim gains bonus attack damage based on his bonus movement speed. This is extremely straightforward, but is at the core of Hecarim's identity. We'll discuss this more in detail throughout the video. Just remember that extra movement speed on Hecarim not only gives you more playmaking potential, but also allows you to deal more damage. Hecarim's Q is called Rampage. Hecarim cleaves his glaive around himself, dealing physical damage to all nearby enemies, reduced to 60% against minions. If Hec damages at least one enemy, he gains a buff for 8 seconds, stacking up to 2 times. Subsequent damaging hits against enemies will refresh this buff's timer. This buff increases Q's damage and reduces its base cooldown. These buffs are increased even further at 2 stacks. Although Hecarim's Q is simple, it's his main DPS spell and gains massive bonuses for keeping these stacks up. This not only goes for in fights, but also while farming your jungle to keep up optimal clear speeds. Hecarim's W is called Spirit of Dread. Hecarim surrounds himself with the Spirit of Dread for 4 seconds, dealing damage to all nearby enemies every second. While this is active, Hecarim is also healed for 30% of post-mitigation damage dealt to enemies within the area, reduced to 15% for damage dealt by allies. This ability is Hecarim's main sustain tool and also scales off bonus AD, meaning building more damage also allows yourself to heal more. Hecarim's E is called Devastating Charge. Hecarim becomes ghosted and gains bonus movement speed that scales up for 4 seconds. Hec's next basic attack during this time gains bonus range and causes him to dash towards the target's direction, revealing them for 1 second. If the target remains nearby during this dash, the bonus movement speed is consumed and Hecarim knocks them back, stunning them and dealing physical damage based on the distance traveled. Devastating Charge resets Hecarim's basic attack timer and can crit as well. Now this is probably Hecarim's most tricky ability that has multiple uses. Obviously, the movement speed and damage is great, but the knockback is really what allows good Hecarim players to make the lives of enemies very difficult. With the right positioning, you can use the movement speed to get behind key targets and knock them into your team, allowing you to make crucial picks. It's important to remember that you can use all of your other abilities during your E-Charge's duration as well. Hecarim's ultimate is called Onslaught of Shadows. Hecarim summons 5 Spectral Riders in an arrow formation and dashes with displacement immunity to the target direction, dealing magic damage and revealing all enemies in his path for 2.5 seconds. Where he stops, enemies in a radius around Hecarim also flee from him and are slowed up to 99% during the duration. This wave of Spectral Riders always travels the full length regardless of where Hecarim himself stops. This is important to note since sometimes using his ult at short range can be better in close quarters fights and I see too many Hecarim players launching themselves max range into the middle of the enemy team for no reason. A cool trick is to charge your E, then use your ultimate to fly behind enemies and then push them back into your team. This works so well since your E's charge duration is paused during the Onslaught of Shadows, allowing you to close massive distances against enemies and shoving them backwards. This ultimate is an extremely powerful team fighting tool since it provides massive AoE CC and utility. If used correctly, a multi-man ult can instantly swing a game in your team's favor. For ability maxing, Hecarim maxes Q first, E second, and W third in pretty much all situations. Runes. Now that we've discussed Hecarim's abilities, let's go over his best rune choices. Hec has two main rune setups, so we'll discuss them one at a time. First and most common in the current meta is Predator. This keystone is just so damn powerful after multiple buffs and synergizes amazingly with his passive Warpath. To close out the Domination Tree, Sudden Impact 
Eyeball Collection, and Ingenious Hunter are by far your best options. For secondary, Sorcery with Celerity and Water Walking are the most common choices by high elo Hecarim players. Nimbus Cloak is another viable option over Water Walking, it just depends if you want a burst of movement speed or stronger river dueling. Inspiration Secondary is also viable with Futures Market and Cosmic Insight. This setup is strong on pretty much all champions and is no different for Hecarim. Just remember to not take Magical Footwear or you'll be playing without a Keystone for the entire early game. Next is Conquer, which is the go-to rune for pure dueling and teamfighting power. I recommend Conquer in games with multiple enemy frontliners since this will allow you to sustain up and deal some serious damage in extended fights. To close out the Precision Tree, Triumph and either Legend Alacrity for more DPS or Legend Tenacity versus Heavy CC teams and Last Stand to finish it off. For Secondary, you either want to run the Sorcery setup which I mentioned earlier or in rare cases where you want the extra tankiness, Resolve with Conditioning and either Revitalize for the extra healing or Unflinching for even more tenacity. Keep in mind that Hecarim also runs Ghost over Flash since the extra movement speed and short cooldown are much more valuable to bolster his kit. For rune shards, attack speed, adaptive force, and either armor or magic resist based on your jungle matchup and enemy team comp. Items. Now let's discuss the top item builds for Hecarim Jungle. To start, both Red Smite and Blue Smite are viable options depending on the enemy team comp. Red Smite is the best choice most cases for the extra dueling power, while Blue Smite allows you to chase down mobile carries much more easily. For Boots, you have three main options. Ionian Boots of Lucidity are a great overall choice for extra ability haste and overall playmaking, while Merc Treads are crucial into heavy CC teams and Plated Steel Caps into heavy AD auto attack based teams. Now for Mythics, Divine Sunder is the best overall option by far. It gives you massive damage and sustain, which fits Hecarim's playstyle perfectly. If you're feeling spicy, Triforce can be another option for more DPS, but keep in mind that if you're looking to climb, Divine Sunder is the more consistent option, especially for newer players. For core items, Sterax Gage, Spirit Visage, and Death's Dance are going to be your go-to choices. Sterax is overall strong for the beefiness, Spirit Visage to increase healing into heavy magic damage, and Death's Dance for survivability into heavy AD. Force of Nature and Deadman's Plate are also strong defensive options that give you movement speed for your passive, but in my opinion, they're a bit overused in low elo, so just keep that in mind. From this point, your choices are pretty wide open depending on what you need for the current game. Your goal is to get as tanky as possible so you can be a frontline for your team, while also building enough AD to pressure and kill the enemy's backline. Knowing what items to build in each game is going to greatly increase the success you have on Hecarim. Jungle Clears Now let's discuss Hecarim's general jungle strategy and pathing. Learning how to efficiently clear on Hecarim is definitely step one, but it's quite easy with some practice. First is making sure you're using your Q in between auto attacks to maximize DPS since it's such a low cooldown. You can also use your Q to kill multiple camps at once, such as Blue and Grump, or while dragging camps to their maximum patience range since you can cast Q while moving. Next is learning how to effectively drag your camps to not only increase efficiency, but also to keep up your Q stacks in between camps. This is very important since keeping two Q stacks throughout your clear will greatly speed up your farming. While ganking, the most important thing you can do is save your E pushback for the right moment. Sometimes the best play is to just run past enemies to ensure that you can push them away from their escape path. Too many times I see low elo Hecarim players running directly at their target just to push them away, failing their ganks. Now for actual jungle paths, the most consistent and by far most common route among high elo Hecarim players is the full clear into scuttle route. Since Hecarim can fully clear before 315 with only one smite used, this allows him to contest scuttle spawn at level 4 versus other junglers who would only be level 3. To do this clear you need to put a second point into your Q at level 3 since your E is useless for farming. It's crucial that you practice your clears so that you can do this on time, since being 10 seconds late can mean that you lose scuttle. If you're against a strong early jungler and are afraid of invades, you can either choose to do a 5 camp clear while taking E at level 3 to allow for some escapes, or to solo start on raptors or wolves to hide your starting position. Learning when to do this comes with experience, but definitely keep it in mind, especially against champions like Xin Cao, Volley Bear, or Lee Sin, who can do aggressive paths and kill you early on. Lastly would be the 3 camp gank path. This usually involves full clearing one side of your jungle into ideally a mid lane gank. 
This path is definitely not recommended to go for often, since you'll be very far behind if unsuccessful. But it can still work, especially since you'll be very unexpected. If the enemy laners are mobile, and your team does not have any gank setup, I would recommend avoiding this and focus on getting an early farm lead instead. Weaknesses Hecarim's biggest weakness is definitely if he gets put behind early game. Although he's not necessarily a weak early game duelist, he does lose to a lot of the strong meta junglers in the first couple clears. If you do fall behind on Hecarim, you're really not going to have a fun time since he does not have great escape tools. Hecarim's mobility spells have extremely long cooldowns and if you don't have alt or E, you'll be very vulnerable to invades in your jungle. This lack of escapes means that if not played correctly, you can easily get caught off guard in teamfights with bad positioning as well. Another weakness is that Hecarim is very item reliant, meaning that without high CS numbers or tons of kills, you'll not be a very scary horse. Always keep this in mind, since Hecarim's strength really just comes from item spikes and has no real utility in his kit besides ult and slightly from his E. Lastly, Hecarim does fall off when it gets to the very late game stages. When the enemy AD and mid not only have the damage to kill you, but also defensive tools such as Guardian Angel or Zhonya's to protect themselves, your job in teamfights becomes much more difficult. Strengths Now let's discuss what makes Hecarim such a powerful jungler in the right hands. First is his extremely fast and healthy jungle clears. When it was a full clearing meta, Hecarim was god tier and for this exact reason. If left alone farming for a couple minutes, Hecarim can power up very quickly and snowball off CSing alone. This is why good Hecarim players know exactly how to path according to their win conditions in each game to maximize playmaking and farming as much as possible. To build onto this, Hecarim is one of the strongest mid-game junglers in the entire game. When he can farm early on uninterrupted and get to his item spikes, Hecarim will completely dominate mid-game objective fights. If he gets ahead at any point, he quickly becomes a 1v9 machine with massive damage, healing, tankiness, and engage all in one. To build onto this, Hecarim's teamfighting needs to be mentioned as a massive strength in itself. His Q, W, and Alt are all AoE and can really destroy the entire enemy team if used correctly. And finally, Hecarim is a fairly simple champion which allows boomer players like myself to shine with some good game knowledge and mediocre mechanics. This is also a great benefit to players trying to learn Hecarim, since he does not have any fancy combos or mechanics to learn. Hecarim's an all-around powerful carry jungler that is one of the best clears in the entire game. He can be a frontline, an engage, DPS bruiser, or even a semi-assassin in the enemy backline. If you're looking for a fast-moving carry that can change their playstyle from game to game, Hecarim is definitely the pick for you. That will do it for my in-depth guide on Hecarim Jungle. If you want to support my content, Make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to keep up with my weekly uploads. Most people who watch are not subbed and any extra support I can get really helps my channel grow. If you have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll be giving away free coaching sessions every month to members of the Discord, so be sure to click the link in the description if you're interested. With all that being said, thanks again for watching. Until the next video, peace out.